Good morning if you're in the UK, good evening if you are in Japan. Um, konnichiwa. My name is Daniel Walkup and um, I'm from the University of Sheffield um, and thank you so much for joining us this morning or this evening. Um, so I'm the International Regional Manager for uh, Japan and I'm also joined today by Saya, um, who is one of our student ambassadors and is, is from Japan. So Saya will be supporting and helping me um, through this presentation. So we're going to look at um, a number of um, different um, parts of today. So we're going to be looking at the University of Sheffield, um, why Sheffield, looking at um, things like the campus and the facilities, a little bit about scholarships, because that's sometimes of interest for some students, Sheffield as a city, some updates with regards to COVID-19 and then we will go through any um, questions that maybe you will have towards the end. So why choose the University of Sheffield? Um, the University of Sheffield is a, a real global university and it is one of the uh, Russell Group universities in the United Kingdom. So it is one of the uh, elite institutions um, we are a world top 100 university and that is by the QS World University Rankings for 2020 and we're a really international institution as well. So we have around about 9,000 international students um, from around 140, 150 different um, countries in the world. Um, so we do have lots of students that come to study at the University of Sheffield due to its, um, its ranking and uh, its its global reputation as an institution. When we think about um, our teaching, we're, our professors and academics are very, very um, passionate about the teaching and, and wanting to teach our students. Um, we have around about 29,000 students in total, um, so we're quite a biggish university in terms of the UK. Um, so we do have a really nice uh, student cohort, lots of students around on campus. The uh, university itself is, is ranked number 22 within Europe for its teaching in excellence. Um, and that basically means that our academics and professors who are teaching our students um, are really uh, excellent in terms of their what they're delivering. So some of the scientists, they're world renowned, they're doing real um, passionate research um, and trying to talk to our students and, and teach our students some of the things that they're currently learning. So you really get taught by some of the, the best people, um, some of the global leaders, um, which is really, really good. And uh, it's what students are looking for. We cover a real um, variety and broad range of, of subjects at the university. So we have five faculties in total. We have Faculty of Science, Engineering, Medicine, Dentistry and Health, Arts and Humanities and Social Sciences. Within that, we then have lots of different departments and different schools. And here's just some of the different subjects which we teach at the university. Some real areas of interest for, for students, in particular within Japan, um, are always different things like um, business and management is always popular, international development, politics, computer science. Um, some of these programs in particular are, are quite popular with Japanese students. So we do have um, a real broad variety of different subjects that we teach, uh, which is really, really good. And you get to meet lots of students from um, learning and learning uh, from all different subject areas, which is really, really good. The university has um, links with many different um, industries, but one in particular which we're quite proud of and one which is based in Sheffield is the Advanced Manufacturing Research Centre. So the AMRC um, is, is based in Sheffield and uh, it is in collabor collaboration with uh, Boeing. So a couple of years ago, Boeing were not actually based in the, within Europe, um, but they now have a base in the uh, in Sheffield as part of the university. And we also work with collaboration with um, the likes of McLaren, Siemens, and BAE. And, and these are all uh, industry partners which are located now within the Advanced Manufacturing Research Centre. Lots of these companies are giving 
current issues and current problems with any products to some of our, our academics and our academics and some of our postgraduate and research students are trying to come up with new ideas and um, better better ways of being able to work. So it's a real link between university and research and um, industry altogether. It's also a brilliant opportunity for any student who's looking to do um, things like internships or also maybe um, looking to do a placement or something like that. Um, so there's lots of possibilities for students. So these are just some of the companies um, which come to the University of Sheffield to, to recruit our students once you graduate. After you graduate, of course, you, everybody wants to get a job and hopefully get a really good job. And uh, these, some of these companies here, they will come and recruit specifically uh, Sheffield students. And that's because they know that the students that study at Sheffield have a really good education. They, what they're learning about is, is current and some of the skills that they're learning will be beneficial within their workplace. So hopefully you'll be able to recognize maybe some of the different um, kind of companies uh, which we work with. Hopefully you'll recognize at least Toyota um, as a Japanese brand. Um, but yeah, these are some of the big global companies which come and recruit our students once you graduate from university. So scholarships, we have a real number of different scholarships and we reward students who are high achieving and have got good merit. The first one is the, an automatic scholarship for Japanese students. So if you accept your offer by the 15th of June this year, and you're hopefully going to start in September 2020, you receive an automatic um, scholarship, which is a certain percentage of the tuition fees. If you're looking for next year, then that will be something which will be similar and in place. Um, so you would need to accept your offer by around sometime in June 2021 for September 2021 start. On top of that, we also then have other scholarships which need an application. So this application, there is a deadline in May. The deadline was just this Monday. So if you are looking for this September, um, at the moment that, well, unfortunately that now has closed, but maybe some of you have already applied. And for undergraduate students, we give out 50 scholarships and it's a 50% discount in your tuition fees. For postgraduate students, there are 125 scholarships and they are 25% discount off your tuition fees. So there is normally a May deadline. So if you're looking to apply for uh, 2021, then it'll be May next year. Uh, and you'll need to be prepared with an application um, as part of the uh, that uh, scholarship application process. With regards to entry requirements to the university, um, we, for undergraduate, if you are currently doing um, the IB or maybe you're doing a foundation, international foundation year, that's absolutely fine. And you can come and apply for first year undergraduate um, at the university. Unfortunately, we don't accept students that do um, Japanese high school qualification. You would need to do an international foundation year first, and you would be able to go to the University of Sheffield International College to complete a international foundation year before progressing onto the undergraduate program. For students who are looking to do a master's program and you're currently studying your bachelor degree, um, you would need to get a GPA of around about 3.0 out of 4.0 or 3.2 out of 4.2 or 3.5 out of 4.5 um, as part of your, uh, your, your GPA from your bachelor's degree. Similarly, if you're looking to apply for a PhD, um, we would need a similar um, GPA from your master's degree. Okay, um, so those are ideally are the entry requirements that we're looking for. Sometimes they may be they may be a little bit lower, and um, so some of the programs they will accept a GPA of a little bit lower, and sometimes they may may need a GPA of a, something a little bit higher. Um, but it's good to this is just a guideline of whereabouts we're looking for in terms of the GPA. 
So we're going to talk a little bit now, a bit more about the campus and the facilities. So the libraries are obviously a really important part of your, um, your learning whilst at the university and particularly for your independent study. So the libraries at Sheffield are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they're open 365 days of the year. Unfortunately, at the moment, they are currently closed due to the current coronavirus pandemic, um, but usually they, they are open every day. There's a lot of different resources inside the libraries, including books and journals, periodicals, um, any articles that you need to get access to, and also the different libraries across the campus are really a unique and quite um, creative and for you to be able to do your study. You will be asked sometimes to do study with um, in group work um, and some of the spaces that we have available you'll be able to do kind of real creative um, uh, working within groups and um, so it's both for independent study and for group work learning which we'll be doing. One of the biggest developments at the university was the diamond building. Uh, the diamond building has been a, built now for around about three years but it was the biggest investment the university has done and um, so they invested 81 million pound into the teaching and learning facility for engineering students at the university. The diamond is not just for engineering students, but also some other students as well. Um, for instance, journal some journalism students may have um, some practical elements in there um, with some of the different journalism suites. And then also it's a, used as a, a study space. So many students will come and use the diamond as part of their um, studying because of the way that it's being designed and it's quite a creative learning environment. So the, we are investing in the campus all the time. Currently underway is a new social science building as well um, and hopefully that will be ready by spring 2021 but again that may have been pushed back a little bit and um, depending on the coronavirus and um, pandemic but hopefully it will be ready um, soon enough for students to be able to use. The Students' Union in Sheffield is ranked number one in the UK and, and has been for the last three years. Um, the Students' Union is, is there to support you and represent you when, you when you need so. It's there to be able to provide you with advice and guidance as to whether you're needing something with regards to being an international student on visa advice or something to do with your accommodation, looking for a job and um, for something part-time. But on top of that, there is so many different places to go um, and relax. So for example, there might, there is uh, lots of cafes, restaurants, coffee shop, um, a general shop, loads and loads of things inside the Students' Union, which is there to be able to uh, support you, but also enhance your experience while studying at university. So you can go and relax in there and um, meet up with your friends, etc. For university accommodation, we guarantee all students accommodation if you apply before August before starting. So if you apply to University of Sheffield for this year and you need and you want your accommodation, obviously the sooner the better. But if you to guarantee your accommodation, we would need the application by at the end of August. The accommodation is great quality accommodation at Sheffield. We've been voted top five accommodation um, in the UK for the last six years in a row um, and that's something we're really proud about. There's two types, uh, well two main areas of accommodation and I'm sure Saya is going to explain it in a little bit but you can either stay in the city accommodation or you can stay at somewhere called Enclough Ranmore which is about a 20 minute walk from campus in a beautiful really green and leafy um, environment with parks around it. So yeah you can choose depending on where you would like to live. Both accommodation and areas have got 24 seven security and also the, um, and maintenance. So if there is a problem with your accommodation, maybe there's a, a, a leak with the water or something, someone will come in and fix it for you. So you don't need to worry. So this is a picture of the center of, of Sheffield. It's a really um, a nice uh, image of um, some of the, um, central buildings and this actually is called the Peace Gardens um, in, located in the city centre of Sheffield. 
Sheffield as a city is right in the middle of the UK. You can't get any more central. Uh, so if you want to do any exploring, it's a great opportunity to be able to explore from. Manchester is the closest and um, biggest city after Sheffield. And there is also a major international airport there. There's a direct train from Manchester International Airport to Sheffield and it takes around about 45 to 50 minutes to get to Manchester and to Manchester Airport. From Manchester you can easily get to, to Japan and um, you can either fly through London or you can fly th through Helsinki. Really, really easy with quick transfer times. Uh, they're my two preferred um, uh, routes if I'm flying to Japan for sure. There are obviously are lots of other opportunities and uh, routes. So if you wanted to visit London, London is really accessible too. So you can get to London within two hours on the train. The train is, um, it's not as quick as the Shinkansen, but it's still okay and pretty quick for the UK. Um, but it's not, it's nothing like the Shinkansen, unfortunately. London, obviously, huge city, um, and the trains to London, there are trains leaving every half an hour from first thing in the morning until later evening. So you can ha maybe just go for the day or for the weekend or whatever. Other than that, it's like I said, it's right in the center of the UK. So it's a great opportunity to travel and maybe visit places like Scotland or Wales um, or other areas of the UK as well. Sheffield is actually England's fourth largest city, it has a population of around about 650,000 people living there. So it's not a small city, um, but it's certainly not a, a huge city. Um, nothing like the like like Tokyo or, or London or, or or anything like that. So it's it's still got a really big, nice, bustling community, but at the same time. Um, it feels quite relaxed um, and also you can see from this picture it's a really green city. So in Sheffield there is around 2 million trees in total which makes it one of the greenest cities in Europe. And in the distance you can see the Peak District which is a national park and hopefully as a student you will be able to visit the Peak District and um, see the, the natural beauty which is Sheffield is a really affordable city in the UK, so your money will go quite far if you're living here. The money for accommodation tends to be a lot more cheaper and affordable than other big cities, such as London, for example, but also things like eating out, going for drinks, coffees, that kind of thing. It's much more affordable and your money does go really far. So you be, should be able to concentrate a lot more on your studies um, and then instead of worrying too much about money, for example. It's also a really safe city. Um, this picture here is the Botanical Gardens, which sits between the university and one of the accommodation in Cliff Ranmore. And the Botanical Gardens is a really nice gardens. Lots of students go there and, and relax, um, especially before and after lectures on the weekends. In the spring, it's really nice because there is cherry blossom in there. Um, and also in, this, in, the winter, in the autumn, you can see that the leaves go nice and red and brown. So it's really nice just to be able to relax. And as I said, there's lots of green spaces. It's a really safe environment um, that you're living within. As well as green spaces, there's also historic buildings as well. This building is the Western Park Museum, which is located right next to the university. So this park here is Western Park. Uh, and just behind it is the uh, Arts Tower, which is my office building. So there's lots of green spaces, lots of opportunity to, to go outside and relax, um, and lots of historic, really traditional um, British buildings to uh, see as well. So um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to be able to pass over to Saya uh, and Saya will be able to talk through her next part for us. ま、
東京生まれでロンの3歳の時にロンドンにあの父の仕事の転勤の,あの都合であのロンドンに行ってであのその時は11歳までロンドンにいたので帰国子女です。でその後中学受験のために東京に戻って、えっと、中学高校は渋谷教育学園渋谷の帰国子女枠であの入学しましたであのその後アメリカの大学に2年間行ってたんですけどやっぱいろんな事情であの転出して今シャフィール大学にあの通ってますであのそあ 1, 1年生の時はあまり大学のなんかあの大学生活にちょっと慣れてなかったのであのいろんな活動をしなかったんですけど2年生と3年生はあのインターナショナル委員会あの委員会が何個かあの学校のスチューデンツユニオン学生連盟であるんですけどその中のインターナショナルあの委員会の,あの今年の今年度はあの副会長でしたであの、まあ、シェフィールドの魅力,魅力とあの選んだ理由について話したいんですけど、まあ、ジャーネルさんが結構あのいろんなのあの説明してくれたんですから、まあ、やっぱりラッセルグループ所属っていうこともあってやっぱり名誉が高いしイギリス内でもイギリス外でも結構あの知られている大学なのでその点は結構大きかったですあとあの国内ジャーナリズム学部がナンバーワン多分あ10年5年ぐらい多分連続でナンバーワンだったのでやっぱりジャーナリズム学びたかったからイギリスとかアメリカに留学してたのでそれも結構重要でしたであと学生連盟生徒満足度ランキングがナンバーワンなんですけど、スチューデンツユニオン学生連盟はあの満足度10今12年間連続で多分ナンバーワンなので、それもすごく魅力があったです。あのやっぱりあの中高、私ずっとダンス部にあの所属してたんで、やっぱりクラブ活動とかあの学問以外の活動を結構重視してたので、あの多分シェフィールドみたいなところだったら、ちゃんとこう、ワークライフバランスがあの保てるかなと思ってあの来ました。で、やっぱり来て感じますね。やっぱりかすごいあの人も優しいしあの、イベントとかもいっぱいあるのですごく充実したあの生活が送れてます。で、あと、まあ、生活費が安いあの。私、ロンドンと東京に住んでたので、あとアメリカの時はニューヨークに住んでたので、やっぱりなんか三大あのお金がかかる都市にあの住んでた。こともあってやっぱりシェフィードに来たらやっぱりすごい何でも安いなっていう感じますね。であとあの意外とやっぱシェフィードってあまり知名度が場所自体の知名度があんまりないので私イギリスに住んでてもあまりイメージがなかったんですけどあのいざ来たらあのすごいインターナショナルコミュニティが大きくてあのやっぱりオリエンタルスーパーマーケットとかなんかあのなんてワールドフーズセクションみたいなところがスーパーマーケットがすごいいっぱいあって。すすごい便利ですねやっぱり日本食も結構ありますしあのすごいあのロンドンレベルの日本食ではあまりないかなと思うんですけどその格段に安い値段で結構まあまあいい日本食が食べれるっていうところも結構嬉しいです。であと、まあ、あの生徒が多いイベントが多いであのシェフィールドって大学が2つあってシェフィールドハラムとシェフィールド大学があるので本当にあの生徒がすごいいっぱいいる街。なんで,す、ね、でやっぱりあのそうするといいあのシェフィールドのシティのあの何て言うのシテ,シティの方々<笑>とかあの学校たちがいろんなイベントを開催するのでやっぱり毎週何かが起きているっていう感じがしますねやっぱりロンドンとかと比べたらやっぱりそうじゃないかなって私は思ってたんですけどあの毎週何かが起き,起きてるのですごい何て言うんだろうつまらないって思った時間があんまりないです。えっと、あと治安がいいですね。あのまあ、東京と比べちゃうと微妙かなと思うんですが、あのまあ、一応海外なのであの多分不安とかもあると思うんですけど、私の今、シェフィールド大学に通っている3年間の中で危険を感じたことは全くないですね。やっぱりイギリスって,あのなんてうんだろうパブカルチャーが結構大きいので、なんかそういうのが怖いなと思う人もいると思うんですけど、全然なんか。大丈夫ですね。<笑>えっと、あとローカルの人がすごく優しい。やっぱりなんかイギリスの中で結構みんな知られてるのは北に行けば行きほど人柄がいいっていうなんかイメージがみんなあるそうで、あのやっぱロンドンとかだと結構、まあ、大都市なので結構なんていうの孤立感。一人一人がもう自分のゴールに向かっている感じ
鳴くが結構強いんですけどやっぱ北の方のシフィードぐらいになるとコミュニティ感がこう強いであのなんか普通に買い物してる時になんかキャッシャーの人とすごいいっぱいた、ま、話せたりなんかバスに乗ってたら隣の人がすごい優しく話しかけてくれたりやっぱりなんかローカルの方だと結構年が上の人が多いので。やっぱりあのおしゃべりが多いですね。<笑>あとあの、さっき言ってたんですけど、イギリス内の旅行アクセスがいい。私のは今のところ、ヨークとリーツと、えっと、マンチェスターと、えっとまあ、ロンドンにもう行っ,て行ったんですけど、まだバーミンガムとリバフルに行けてなくて結構悲しいですけど、あのちょっと行けるかどうか微妙になっちゃったので、あのでもあの、本当にそのやっぱり、マンチェスター、ヨーク、リーズあたりは全部すごいなんか同じエリアにあるので、1時間以内で絶対行ける。しかもあの電車賃がやっぱり学生割引がいっぱいあるので、すごい安く,安くあの交通があの使えます。であと、まああの、街の中心がまとまっていて便利っていう、そういうシェフィールドってあのすごいエリア的には大きいんですけど、あのいろいろなんか散らばってる感じではない。なんていうのなんかあの中心街が人塊なところにあるのでそこの中心街に出れば何でもあるでミュージアムもあるしシアターもあるし普通の買い物の,なんかあの洋服屋とかスーパーとか全部がこう中心に行けばもう徒歩最大10分ぐらいで全部あるのですごくあの便利ですね。私のよっぽどどっかに行く時じゃない場合じゃなければ全部徒歩で済め済ましてます。あの結構坂がいっぱいあるあの街なのでそれも結構大変なんですけどあのジムに行かなくて済むので結構楽しいですね。やっぱりなんか歩歩いてると結構あのいろんなシェフィールドの探索ができるのでそれもすごくおすすめです。Next slide please. Thank you.、Um, えっとこれはちょっと。私の2年3 1年、2年、3年のちょっとあの写真集なんですけど、えっと、左上が、えっと、インターナショナル委員会、今年3月15日、ロックダウン寸前のイベントだったんですけど、これはインターナショナルカルチャルイブニングって言って、シェフィールドのシティホールの中であの行う大きい最大なインターナショナルイベントで、えっと、いろんな国からあの来てる。生徒の子たちがソサエティっていうのはクラブ活動みたいなのをやってるんですけどその子たちがあの応募してこうあのコンペティションコンペみたいなやつでこうダンスとかあの演劇とかをあのやってじなんか自分たちの,あの文化をみんなに広めるような感じのイベントです。それを副会長で一応浴衣着物にしようと思ったんですけどちょっと大変すぎたんで浴衣にしました。えっと、それと隣その隣が牛た,ち牛たちなんですけど牛たちは。ピーク地方の牛たちです、えっと、1年生の時に友達と一緒にピーク地方にふらっと行ったんですけど本当に30分ぐらいの電車の旅でこんな,なんかもう田舎みたいなところにすごいあの簡単に行ける面白い感じの,あの,<笑>あの旅行だったんですけどまあこれ全然日帰りであの行けました。えっと、でその隣が、えっと、アクティビティーズアワーズって言ってその私2年と3年の時に2つ委員会やってたんですけどこれはソサイエティ委員会って言ってなんかクラブ活動の活動を見守る委員会みたいなあのやつだったんですけどあの中のアクティビティアワードっていうのはそのクラブ活動とか委員会の中ですごい頑張ってる人をなんかあのしょしょお称するこうイベントだったんです。それをホストなんかイベントプランニングとかあのをしましたでその下右下ですね、まあ、これ多分,多分桜だと思うんですけどこれはあの私の家からスーパーに行く途中の道でフラッとあの撮った写真なんですけどあのすごいやっぱりダニエルさんが言ってたようにシェフィールドすごく緑が多い街だなと私感じていて。でなんかそれで結構空気が、今すごい気持ちいいです、空気。やっぱりなんか、あの、車とかあんまりみんな、いや、あの、走ってないので、すごく空気がいいですね。やっぱりなんか、すごい田舎感がないのに、なんで自然が多いっていう、なんかすごくいいバランスですね、私にとっては。で、あとその隣の真ん中なんですけど、これもまたインターナショナル委員会の、あの、友達、友達って言われた
メンバーの写真です。でこれはあのワールドフードフェスティバルっていう毎年2月か5月にあのラマダンの関係で変わるんですけどあのやってるあのなんていうのいろんな国の,あの食べ物をこう出すイベントなんですけどまだ日本クラブがまだ1回も出せてないのでもし来たら日本クラブにあの参加して。ぜひ餃子とかカレーとか作って応募してください。私も多分、卒業していないんですけど、ぜひぜひやってください。<笑>で、えっと、その隣、一番最後の左,左,左下か、左下は、えっと、そのさっきのアクティビティーズアワーズの中で、あの、賞をあの私が渡,し渡,せ渡す役をあの務めました。それ結構楽しかったなっていう、なんか、すごいいい思い出の写真です。Okay, next slide, please. Thank you. で、最後に留学に関してのアドバイスなんですけど、えっ、ー、と、まあ、まず、左の学校選び準備、来る前に、あの、当たっては、やっぱ場所だけで大学を決めない。私はやっぱり、あの、アメリカの大学に行ってた時に、ニューヨークの大学に行ったんですけど、それのなんか、まあ、95% ぐらいはニューヨークに行きたかったから、その大学に決めた。まあ、他の、まあ、奨学金とかもあったんですけど、やっぱりニューヨークにすごく、あの、惹かれて、たんですけどやっぱりニューヨークってすごいすごく楽しい街なんですけどやっぱ学生にとってはそんなにフレンドリーではない街でしたねやっぱり物価も高いしあのすごい人も多いしやっぱりなんつうのあの街自体が楽しすぎてちゃんと学問に打ち込めなくなったりしちゃうことがあったのでやっぱりあのシフィールドみたいにこうバランスが保てるようなところすごいなんかつまらないわけではないけどこうちゃんとあのなんて言うんだろうちゃんと自分の時間をあのマネージできるようなところが結構おすすめですね。えっと、あとでできるだけ英語を聞く話すようにするっていうんですけど私もあの帰国子女とはいえあの11歳から18歳まで日本だったので,で、まあ、帰国子女プログラムにすごい入れてすごい幸いだったんですけどあのやっぱり英語の英語に関して不安がある方にはやっぱりあの英語の音楽を聴いたり、英語のテレビ番組を見たり、やっぱり耳からあの入るようにあのやっぱりする方がいいと思います、ね。やっぱり日本人の人って結構みんなあの書く読むはすごく上手にできてるんですけど、やっぱり話すのがやっぱり難しい人が多いみたいなので、あのやっぱり耳から入るとこう英語のなんか音がそんなに不自然じゃなく感じ,感じるようになるっていう。あのなんか原理みたいなのがあるみたいなのでやっぱりそうインプットをこう大切にしてそれまあ話すっていうのはやっぱ日本にあんまりイギリス人とかあの英語の喋れる人があんまりいないと私勝手に勝手にイメージしてるんですけどまあ,あのは話せる時はできるだけ話すようにあのするといいと思いますであと各大学の英語サポートセンターの確認をするっていうんですけどまああのシフィル大学の場合、イギリシュ・ラングエッジ・ティーチング・センターっていうあのエッセイのなんかチェックとかしてくれる、全部タダであのしてくれるサービスがあるんですけど、やっぱり各大学によって違うので、あのそこのチェック結構あの重要だと思います。であとあの、マリオを選ぶとき何が一番優先か考えるなるんですけど、あのさっき言ってたようにこうエンドクリブランモアとあとシティって2つの,あの大きいあのアコモデーションに分かれてるんですけど、私は1年生の時シティアコモデーションにあの入ってました。やっぱりその理由としては、あの自分のこう学科のビルと、あのスチューデンツユニオン学生連盟ビルとダイヤモンドビルが、そこだと徒歩、まあ、5分ぐらいなんですよ。やっぱりシティアコモデーションってシティっていうだけあって、こう中心寄りなんですね。やっぱりだからしさっき言ってたこう中心街も 10, 10分15分徒歩で。全然アクセスが良かったので私はやっぱり便利さが一番重要だなと思ったのであのそこにしましたでもあのエンドクリフランマンに行くメリットもすごくいっぱいあってやっぱりそこだとスチューデントビレッジなのでほとんど周りの人がもうが学生で、まあ、特に B アンダーグラジュエットの,あの1年生の人たちにはすごくおすすめですねやっぱりあのコミュニティ感がすごく強いのでそこに行くとすごい自然に友達がいっぱいできるあのところだと思います。で、あとあの、持ってくるべきもの、日本でしか買えないものをチェックって結構あの
当たり前な感じがするんですけどやっぱり日本食がすごくブームなのでイギリスで今あの買えるっちゃ買えるんですけどやっぱりすごく高いですねあのシェフィールドでも結構まあなんていうの、まあ、例えば醤油とかを買おう,買おうと思った時は日本のブランドと中国のブランドとすごいな全然違うんですね値段がで最近だとイギリスのブランドも醤油とかを出しているのでやっぱりあの私的にはちょっとあの醤油そを食べると味やっぱり違うなって感じるのであのもしふりかけとか、まあ、あんまりかさばらないものがなんか結構軽いものだったらじゃあのぜひぜひ日本から持ってきた方がいいと思います。えっと、あとは学部に関しての質問は在学生に聞いたり E メールをして確認するってなんですけど今あのスタディチャットみたいなのがあのジリバーシーのウェブサイトであって私とかあのし、まあ、他のあ日本人の子は他に多分サインアップしてないのかなあの、まあ、全部英語なので一応あの自分の学部自分の意思望した学部のあのフィルターをするとその学部にいる子たちが全部バーって出てくるので学部にくっついての質問はそうダイレクトにあの質問できます在学生に。であとはあの、まあ、一番いいのはその学部の E メールに聞くのが一番効果的ですね。やっぱりその人たちがあの一番専門の知識を持っているのでもしなんかこのコースはこのコースのあの試験はどうなん,どんなんですかみたいな聞きたいんだったら学部の人に聞いた方がいいと思います。あとまあ進学後なんですけど積極的に日本人以外の生徒に話しかけるってやってやっぱりあのシェフィールド、まあ、ロンドンほどではないんですけど日本人意外と多いです。あのでやっぱり日本クラブも結構は反映しててすごくなんかあの日本文化がすごく、まあ、やっぱりブームなのであのイギリス人で日本文化が好きな人とか、まあ、あの永住の人とか日本人でイギリスに永住の人とか私みたいに帰国子女の人とか交換留学生の人がいっぱい意外といっぱい日本人の生徒の人たちがいっぱいいるのでそ,れをこうそのコミュニティもすごく大事なんですけどやっぱり留学するっていうことはこうなんていうかあの自分のカンファートゾーンから出る。やっぱりことなのであの私の一番のおすすめとしてはあのいろんなアクティビティとかイベントとかに参加してなるべくなんかあのシフィールドに来なかったら会えなかっただろうって思う人と友達になることがすごいおすすめですね。私の場合は結構ブルガリア人の子とかあのシンガポールから来てる子とかすごいいろんな,なんかすごくインターナショナルなコミュニティなのであのいろんなところから来てる人たちと会えますね。あとクラブ活動やボランティアに参加してみるってクラブ活動すごく充実してるあの学校で350以上のクラブが今あのステューデントユニオンにありますいやそれなんかポケモンクラブみたいなとかあのすごいなんかなんていうのすごいニッチなあのところやつからもう普通のなんかバレーボールクラブとか普通のやつまでいっぱいあるのであの絶対なんか自分があの面白そうだなと思うことが絶対あると思うのでぜひぜひ参加してあの便器だと思いますであとは学校シェフィード主催のイベントに参加するなんでほとんどのものが本当に無料なんで入場無料とか,なんかあのフリーギフトバッグみたいな<笑>すごいいっぱいあのただでもらえるものがいっぱいあるのであのすごくいいですねあの学,校学校主催のイベントは大体なんていうんだろう,うん、まあ、学生向けにあのやってるやつなので、まあ、あのスタディセッションとかあのまあ、私たち、私インターナショナル委員会でやってるインターナショナルのなんか文化を広めるイベントとか、そういうのがいっぱいなんですけど、あのシェフィールド自体は、まあ、なんかビーガンフ,ルフードマーケットとか、なかクリスマスマーケットとか、そういっぱい、なんか毎週、ま、毎週のように何かがあるので、シティセンターに、ぜひぜひあの行,った行くべきだと思います。であと、まあ、日本人クラブ、さっき言った日本人クラブに加盟して、交換留学生やイギリス永住の日本人心に誓ったって、イベントや言語交換に参加してみるってあるんですけど、言語交換っていうのはなんかあの日本人、日本語を知ってる日本人と英語を知ってるイギリス人がこう一緒になんか対面して、なんかその言語を教え合うようなシステムなんですけど、あのやっぱり日本人が好き、日本人文化が好きな子とか、あのイーストエージャンスタディーズっていう東アジア学
のなんかジャパニーズ・スタディーズっていうのがすごくあの名誉のある学部なのでシェフィールドだの中だとあのその学部の子たちがみんな結構ちゃんとあの日本語をもっとあのな習うためにあのよくタンデムに来てるのねあのすごいそこからもこうなんかローカルの人のと友達を作ったりインターナショナルの子との友達になったりできるあのいい機会だと思います。あとまあ家族や友達とのコミュニケーションを忘れずにってあるんですけどあのやっぱり今だと LINE とか、まあ、Zoom とかあの FaceTime とかであのいつでも家族とかあのどこにいる人でもつながれるようになったのですごくそれ重要だなと思いますねやっぱりホームシックにならない人もいると思うんですけどやっぱりあのすごくイギリスと日本と結構違うところがあるのでしかも1人で来てる場合あのやっぱりあのー、ちょっとなんていうんだろうちょっと孤独感があったりした時はあのよくコミュニケーションを取るといいと思います。であとまあイギリス内の街を冒険するってなんですけど私も3年間の中でもっと行けばよかったなって結構思うのであのまあリバプールとか音楽が好きな人ビートルズ好きな人とかはリバプールに行ってみたり、まあ、ニューキャッスルとかもすごい綺麗だしスコットランドもすごいあのイギリスと違う魅力があって。あるたりなんかアイルランドとかもすごい綺麗なのであの本当に学生のうちにしか多分そんな旅行はできないんだろうなとすごいか今就活してて感じるのであのあのよく行くべきだと思います、ね、やっぱりあのレールカードとかコーチカードってやつだと3分の1オフになるんですねほとんどの電車賃とかがそういうのすごくあの便利であのそうすると大体あのシェフィールド近辺だと10ポンド以下だから1000円以下で絶対行けるので往復あのだから結構おすすめですねであと最後ヨーロッパ旅行をするってまあこれはまあ金銭的にあと時間的に余裕がある人がいいと思うんですけど、まあ、マルタとか最近すごい流行ってるところとかまあなんかキプロスとかすごいあのなんて格安くわさこれからどうかわからないんです格安く格安くこうライアンエアーとかであのすごい簡単に前までは行けてたのであのち,ゃちゃんと前のように戻ればまたヨーロッパに旅行がすごく簡単に行けますねだからそれもすごくおすすめです Thank you Thank you so much Sayer Thank you so much So um If any students have any questions for Saya, they will be able to ask you at the end.、Um, but brilliant, thank you. So, what I wanted just to finish with was just to give you some updates、um, regarding COVID 19 and the different support that the university is, is doing at the moment. So, currently, the university is open and the buildings are, are not open, but the university is open with regards to. Um, everything else. So I'm still at work,、um, all of my different colleagues, the professors, etc., we're all still working.、Um, but obviously, the health and the well being of the students, staff, and the communities, the university's、uh, number one priority, hence the buildings being closed. We have now launched our international hub for all international offer holders. So, if you have applied to the University of Sheffield already and you are holding an offer, we do now have an international hub for students. This will be an opportunity for you to have things like one to one chats、uh, with different staff members. Um, there are live webinars, live QAs, things on accommodation,、um, visas, CAS, that kind of thing. It's also an opportunity for you to talk to our current students、um, as well. So, we have a Facebook offer holder group. You can also chat to our students on the university website as well. One of the most important things is the COVID 19 FAQs page. So, this website here, you'll be able to get all of the different information there and regarding and all the different updates regarding coronavirus. The International Merit Scholarship deadline was extended until Monday, so it was supposed to close at the beginning of May, but we extended it due to the coronavirus、um, pandemic, and, but that now has closed. With regards to admissions, we are aware that across the globe, the COVID 19 pandemic、um, has hit many different countries and has affected students'、um, education, whether that's at school and college. Or whether that's at university. 
So we are in regular contact with different overseas examination boards and different universities and our partner unis. Um, and we are looking at uh, assessment and mitigating circumstances for students where they've been unable to sit examinations or there has been um, some flexibility with their current course. So we're trying to be as flexible as we possibly can with your, with your grades, etc. Um, but obviously we're still looking for a certain quality um, and we're still being um, really fair as well. There has been an extension to tuition fee deposits. So for students who have applied for postgraduate programmes and have been asked to pay a tuition fee deposit, those deadlines have been extended. And please do continue to look at your emails and look at the COVID-19 um, FAQs page for any further um, announcements, if there are any further extensions. We've also changed our tuition fee deposit refund policy. So if, if you decide that potentially you don't want to come to study in this current September and if you have applied or you are looking to defer, then we've also changed our policy there. So it's worth having a little look again on the COVID-19 frequently asked questions page. For students where it's been difficult to get to an IELTS uh, centre, if you're doing IELTS as part of one of your, um, as part of your English language, um, we have approved, um, there are some newly approved alternative English language tests. So we have the TOEFL IBT, the NCUK English language test and also language cert. So these are additional English language um, alternative tests we are now accepting as well as the, some of the other more traditional ones which we um, have always accepted. So if you are struggling at the moment to get some English language tests because of certain test centres being closed, of course speak to SIUK who will be able to support you the, um, the counsellors will be able to support you um, with um, different opportunities that you can have um, but we're just letting you know that we are accepting some alternative language tests as well to be able to help and support our students. I just also thought it'd be important to mention the graduate immigration route. So some students may be aware that if you are coming to start this September and graduate next year, um, there, would, there would be an opportunity for you to apply for the graduate immigration route. As far as we know, um, that is still happening and still looking to take place. Now, students who obviously um, go for that route will need to um, make an application um, etc and that's obviously through to do with the um, UK government with that graduate immigration route so that the post-study work visa is still um, hopefully going to be in place and is still going to be um, uh, valid for um, students who start this coming September so if you're looking for after that then definitely it will be ready for you. Here's just some useful contacts as well. So if you have your phone with you and you wanted to take a picture of this slide, uh, that's absolutely fine. But if you need to get in contact with us for any different reasons, so whether it would be the Global Engagement Team, the English Language Teaching Centre, if you're looking to do pre-sessional English, they've got some uh, chat sessions there. The admissions team, if you wanted to chat with a current student, the website address is there for you. If you are already an offer holder and want to be part of the Facebook group, again, there's the link there, um, accommodation and also the international hub for offer holders as well. So there's lots of information there. So like I said, if you wanted to screenshot it or if you wanted to take a picture on your phone, then brilliant and you'll be able to use that at a later stage. Finally, um, we're going to take some questions um, in a second, but also there's my email address at the bottom. Um, so yeah, my name is, is Daniel and my email address is just d.walkup at sheffield.ac.uk. So if you've got any further questions for me and you wanted to email me, then you can do as well. Brilliant. So what we'll do is we'll open it up for questions now. So I'll stop sharing my screen. Perfect. Okay. So if you've got any pro questions and you wanted to write it in the Q&A or anything, um, we'll be able to, to, to do that for you. So if, whether it's a question for me or for Saya, um, hopefully we'll be able to help. And if we need 
any assistance as well from SIUK, then um, we can help there as well. Thank you very much, Daniel and Sayan. Um, あの、自由に皆さんお聞きになりたいことがありましたら、えっと、直接マイクをアンミュートしていただいて発言いただいてもいいですし、もしくはあのチャットの方で質問をお送りいただければ、順次ご回答できますので、えっとどうぞお送り
because their programs are a little bit more flexible than undergraduate programs, for example. Um, so there's a little bit more time, but of course, a master's program, the student is is a bit more intense um, because of the amount of independent study that they will have to do um, as well. Saya, um, as a student at the University of Sheffield, um, do you have any part-time jobs besides being a student ambassador? And um, do you have any tips about um, um, work, the amount of work you do, and the amount of jobs available in Sheffield? Should I answer in English or in Japanese? It's like a weird... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. you that? wish that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, ma. あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
don't worry and the department will be in contact before you you come and start at Sheffield. Thank you. Um, there are also a few questions related to accommodation. Is it a must to study in Sheffield accommodation? I am planning to stay in um, LBI student accommodation. It's, it seems to be another accommodation. And also, is it the accommodation guaranteed for three years? Okay, so um, it is, it's not a must um, to stay in Sheffield accommodation. If you would prefer to stay in private accommodation, of course you can do. Um, with private accommodation, um, it, it's great. Some of the accommodation is absolutely beautiful. But you won't receive as much, well. You won't receive support from the University of Sheffield if there are problems. Say, for example, um, we will help and help and guide you, but they're not going to support you as much because it's not Sheffield accommodation. Another thing to think about with LIV student accommodation, for example, here or other private accommodation, is it may not be just University of Sheffield students, but students who are in Sheffield maybe studying at another university or um, or something like this. So it's just something to weigh up whether you want to um, do that. But the student obviously has done their research, which is great. Um, uh, and uh, there, yeah, there really is some beautiful accommodation available for all different types of students. With regards to the guarantee, um, it's not guaranteed for three years. The guarantee um, is uh, for, for one year and it's, uh, well, we guarantee it for one, for one year in your, in your first year. Um, Manaka, I think you're looking to study undergraduate study. So what students tend to do in Sheffield um, is they will tend to stay in student halls of residence potentially for their first year and then we'll move into a student house in their second and third year with their with all their friends. Um, that tends to be what the, the students, undergraduate students do. Manaka, in my opinion, probably the best opportunity for you if you decided to apply for student accommodation at Sheffield is to apply for Encliff Ranmore because that's where a vast majority of undergraduate students are. So there's around about four and a, four, four and a half thousand undergraduate students at Encliff Ranmore. Um, it's a much bigger community, much bigger feel, lots and lots of home British students and also some a really nice mix of international students as well. Um, but my opinion would be probably that option for you. You'll get a much better student experience and um, uh, I think. So that first year we will guarantee you accommodation and then your second and third year you'll, you'll move into a student house. So hopefully that's answered two of the accommodation questions. Thank you very much, Daniel, for your answer. Um, the next question is for Saya. I'm thinking about applying for unis both in the UK and the US currently. As a student who's been at both countries, what is the biggest difference between them? What kind of points should I consider? Yeah. Um, it's really weird because I read in English and then I have to speak in Japanese and my brain is like, wow, but okay. えっと、一番違うのはちょっと値段だと思いますね。やっぱりイギリスの大学も結構安いわけではないんですけど、アメリカだとすごく高かったんです。やっぱり私の場合フォーダム大学っていうあのプライベート大学がまあパブリックユニ
、写真とかで結構なんて雰囲気がつかみやすいっていうよりっていうのに比べてやっぱりアメリカだとアイダホ州とかって言われてもえー、みたいなアイダホってポテトのアイダホみたいな全然イメージが浮かばない感じが私的にはあのしてやっぱりそ,それも結構大きいしあとあのアコモデーションについてなんですけどあのアメリカの場合だと絶対ルームシェアですね私の場合アメリカは2年いたんですけど1年目は3人でワンルームシェアで2年目は6人であの2人と部屋ずつでしたでやっぱりなんかまあなんて言うんだろうな、まあ、アメリカのなんかユニバーシティエクスペリエンスの結構大きいパートだと思うんですけどそのドームドームメイトみたいなあのフラットメイトみたいなやつは結構大きいと思うんですけどやっぱり、まあ、マスターズの感じで来てる人とか PHT の人とかあとなんかまあ日本人、まあ多分人によると思うんですけど、主に私が会ってきた日本人の人の中では、やっぱり自分の時間がちょっと欲しい人が結構多いなって私は感じて、やっぱりイギリスの場合だとあの、自分の部屋とバスルームユニットとデスクとベッドがあって、で、シェアのエリアはシェフィールドの場合、あのキ,リキッチンとリビングルームだけなので、これまあ全然なんか自分の引きこも一人で引きこもってるわけでもないしずっとなんか誰かが同じ部屋にいるっていうわけでもないなんで結構それは結構私的には大きかったですねであとあとなんだろううんなんだろうなまああのこれに関して興味がある人によるんですけどグリークライフソロリティフラターナティがないっていうのもありますねイギリスの場合はそういうなんかそういうクラブはないので、やっぱなんかそのリクルートされるクラブみたいな、あのなん,なんていうんですかね、日本語で。なんていうんですかね。フラタリティ、ソロリティ。うん、<笑>すごくアメリカなものなんですけど、まあ、あのプレッジっていうなんかハウスみたいなのがあって、で、あのそれになんか応募するんですよ、人みんな、フレッシャーの子たちが。で、そのなんかハウスの人たちが、あの投票かなんかをしてなんかそのハウスに入れるかどうかが決まるみたいなあのやつ友愛会っていうのかな,なんか、まあ、そういうやつもあるのであすごくアメリカンカルチャーなものが結構あってであとなんか違うものっていうのがあります、ね、あとなんかちょ,ちょっと微妙な話なんですけど、まあ、イギリスだとあの飲酒年齢が違うのでパブとかに普通に行けるところで。<笑>あのと比べてあとアメリカだと21歳以上なのでまあアンダーグラジュエットで来てる人はあのそこも結構違いますねパブカルチャーが結構大きいのであのそれは結構イギリス独特なものですねはいありがとうございますあの寮に関しては本当にイギあのプライベートな自分の部屋があるのはイギリスらしいというか通常はそのオンスイートが一番スタンダードなんですが自分のプライベートの部屋にトイレとあとシャワーもついていてキッチンだけ67人で共有なので程よくこうプライバシーも保たれながらあのコミュニケーションも取れるっていうようなのがイギリスではスタンダードですね。でそうですねちょっとお時間があの来てしまいましたのでまだあのご質問がある方はこの後個別にあの担当しているコンサルタントへメールを送りいただければと思います